So two older couples were having dinner at the home of one of them. And after dinner, the women went off into the kitchen, of course, and the two guys were chatting in the dining room. One of them said, hey, you know, we had this great dinner last night at this new restaurant. It was very delicious. The food was great. It was very reasonable. So the other guy says, oh, what's the name of the restaurant? So he says, oh, um, um, what's the name of that flower, you know, that's romantic and it has thorns? So the first guy, so, so the other guy says, you mean a rose? He said, yeah, 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 that's it. Hey, Rose, what was the name of that restaurant from last night? <laughs> what well, starts with a P and ends with an E and that has a, a thousands of letters in it? Post office. <laughs> a very wealthy man goes into a pet store and he says to the pet store owner, I can't afford anything. I would love to have the most exotic pet you have. So the shopkeeper goes in the back, he comes out with a little box, a little house, and inside is a centipede. He says, this centipede is a talking centipede. He tells jokes, he'll keep you company. The man says, all right, I'll take it. He takes it home, and he has a marvelous time. And he's listening to jokes, having good conversation. And he says to the centipede, he says, you know what? Let's go out to the bar, have a couple of drinks, I'll introduce you to my friends. All right? No answer. He says, let's go out to the bar. We'll have a few drinks. I'll introduce you to my friends. Still silence. So he starts to knock on the back of the little house. Centipede sticks his head out. He says, I heard you the first time. I'm putting on my shoes. A man's at home and he hears a knock on the door. He opens the door and he sees a snail on his front step. He picks up the snail and he throws it as far as he can. A few years later, man hears a knock on his door. He opens the door and there is the snail. Snail says, what was that all about? Knock, knock. Who's there? Who? Who, who? Oh, there's an owl. Where is it? I can't find it. Where's the owl? This joke is dedicated to Janice Zeltzer. An airplane was filled to capacity with Hadassah women on their way to a convention. Unfortunately, due to some mechanical problems, the plane crashed and no one on board survived. God received the bad news, but since the tragedy was unexpected, he didn't have enough room in heaven to accommodate the women on such short notice, so he contacted his contacts in hell. Satan, he said, can you please take these Hadassah women for a few days until I can make room for their acceptance into heaven? No problem, responded Satan. A few hours later, Satan called God and said, I'm sorry, but you have to take these Hadassah women now. Why so soon, asked God. These women have only been here for three hours, and they're already raised enough money for air conditioning. Happy Purim. What has to be broken before you use it? An egg. The next time you get angry at someone, you can always walk a mile in their shoes. Then you'll be a mile away from them, and you'll have their shoes. Hello everyone, I hope you enjoy this joke. Why did the kids cross the playground? Why? To get to the other slide! Subject, word differences. Complete and finished. No English dictionary has been able to adequately explain the difference between these two words. In a recent linguistic competition held in London and attended by supposedly the best in the world, Samdar Balgobin, a Guyanese man, was the clear winner with a standing ovation for five minutes. The final question was, how do you explain the difference between complete and finished? in a way that is easy to understand. Some people say there is no difference between complete and finished. Here is his astute answer. When you marry the right woman, you are complete. When you marry the wrong woman, you are finished. And when the right one catches you with the wrong one, you are completely finished. What do you get when you play a country western song backwards? 
You get your dog back, you get your house back, you get your wife back. <laughs> so Morty and Moisha are sitting at a park bench in Miami, and Morty says to Moisha, "Ah, oh, it's a terrible story. I used to live in New York. I had a clothing store, and a terrible fire came through, burned it all down, so I took the insurance proceeds, and I came to live down here in Miami. And then Morty said, oh, I had a similar story. I also had a retail store in New York. Hurricane came through, wiped the whole thing out. I took the insurance money and moved down here to Miami. And then Morty said, terrible, but I only have one question. How do you start a hurricane? What do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. How many Jewish grandmothers does it take to change a light bulb? None, I'll just sit here in the dark. A visitor to Israel attended a concert at the Moskowitz Auditorium. He was quite impressed with the architecture and the acoustics. He inquired to the tour guide, this is magnificent, this auditorium. Is it named after Chaim Moskowitz, the famous Talmudic scholar? No, replied the guide. It's named after Sam Moskowitz, the writer. Never heard of him, said the visitor. What did he write? A check, replied the guide. <laughs> Once there was a pirate who never wore a shirt until one day he noticed some suspicious moles on his back. He went to the dermatologist and the dermatologist told him, don't worry, they're benign. And the pirate said, are you sure? Because I think there's at least the 10. Do you know why ants never get sick? It's because they have little antibodies. How do you keep a bagel from getting away? Put locks on it. A woman in labor suddenly shouted, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, didn't, can't. Don't worry, said the doctor. Those are just contractions. Here's my joke. As you know, I'm an RN, but I'm also a therapist. So here's my favorite therapist joke. How many therapists does it take to change a light bulb? Only one. But the light bulb really has to want to change. <laughs> what did the fans say at the Pearl Jam concert? Doesn't get any better than this. A duck walks into a hardware store. He asks the owner, got any duck food? The owner says, no, look around. This isn't a pet food store. Go somewhere else. Okay, well, go away. Duck goes away. Duck comes back the next day. He asks again, got any duck food? The owner says, no, I told you yesterday. We don't have any duck food here. It's not a pet food store. Look around. At the hardware store, we got rakes, we got shovels, we got fertilizer. We don't have any duck food. Go away. Duck goes away. Third day, duck comes back. Got any duck food? This time the owner gets really mad. He says, no, I've been telling you every day. We don't have duck food here. If you come back in here again asking that same stupid question, I'm going to hammer your feet to the counter. Now go away. Mm -mm, duck goes away. Next day, though, duck comes back again. He has a question. Got any nails? Um, no. Got any duck food? My brother tells that joke every Thanksgiving. I love it. Three Jewish women who grew up in the same neighborhood, hadn't seen each other for decades, and coincidentally all had daughters, gathered together to share information about their families. The first mother proudly stated that her daughter had become a professor of economics, the second mother stated that her daughter was a psychiatrist. The third mother remained silent, saying nothing. After several minutes, the other women impatiently asked, well, what does your daughter do for a living? 
She finally said she became a rabbi. A rabbi, the other women said. What kind of job is that for a nice Jewish girl? <laughs> <laughs> what did the tomato say to the top hat? You go on ahead. I'll catch up. So Saul was 98 years old. He got released by hospice and went home to die with his family surrounding him. So as he's lying there in extreme pain, he sees his great-grandson, Abi, run by his doorway. And he yells out, Abi, Abi, come here, come here, Abi. And Abi comes bopping in, his seven-year-old self, saying, Hi, Grandpa, what do you need? So Saul says, Abi, do you smell that? That is your grandmother's sponge cake. People used to come from miles around just to have a little morsel of your grandmother's sponge cake. Please, do your dying great-grandfather one last wish and get me a slice of that wonderful sponge cake. So A.B. says, okay, Grandpa, and he, he runs off. About 30 seconds later, he comes back empty-handed. And Saul says, A.B., what happened to the sponge cake? And A.B. said, Grandma said no. She's saving it for the ship. I'm like a piece of plywood board. What did the little teddy bear say when his grandma offered him a plate of hamantaschen? No thanks, I'm stuffed. <laughs> a grandma and her little grandson were walking along the seashore. All of a sudden, a giant wave came up, pulled up the little boy, and took him far out to sea. The grandma looked up at the heavens and said, Oh God, please bring my grandson back to me. And immediately another wave came up and gently deposited the little boy back at her feet, safe and sound. The grandma looked up at the sky again and said, God, he had a hat. <laughs> What's the forecast when it's raining elephants? Very heavy showers. When a woman is pregnant, can you call her a bodybuilder? A minister, a priest, and a rabbi walk into a bar. The bartender addresses the rabbit and says, what will you have? The rabbit says, nothing. I'm only here because of autocorrect. All right, I apologize in advance for this joke. Uh, but here it is. Um, so once upon a time, there was a frog named Benny. And Benny wanted to be cool. You know, Penny, Benny didn't feel like he really fit in uh, with the other frogs at his school. Um, so one day, he is walking on the beach, and his foot hits something really hard and metal. And he... Uh, picks it up, dusts dust off the sand, and it's, uh, it's a genie. It's a genie in a bottle. And the genie pops out and says, Benny, I'm a genie. I'm gonna grant you three wishes, anything you want. It, it shall be done. And Benny says, he thinks, Benny thinks long and hard. Because Benny wants to be really cool, so he thinks about something that'll make him cool. So the first thing that pops into his head is, I would like a flat brim hat. So the genie says, all right, you'll have a flat brim hat. And waves around his hand, and Benny has a flat brim hat. And then Benny goes to school the next day, and all the other frogs are like, oh my god, Benny, you're so cool. Like, you have such good style. I want to be just like you. And Benny is super popular. He's the most popular frog in school. And... So like that, that goes on for about a couple of weeks and then eventually everyone starts getting flat brim hats and eventually Benny is not this cool frog uh, that has something unique. You know, everybody has it now, so he's not really that cool anymore. Uh, so Benny goes back to the genie and says, Genie, I'm not cool anymore. I need something else that's going to make me cool. And, and asks for a long, a really big, thick gold chain. Right, because all the rappers are, are wearing that. So the genie's like, all right, I'll make it so. You have your gold chain. 
So then Benny goes back to school with that gold chain and everyone is just awestruck. They're like, oh my God, that is so cool. Like, Benny, you're, a, you're so cool. Like, I want to be just like you. And Benny has his another two weeks of popularity before everyone else starts getting gold chains. And eventually he's not uh, unique anymore. So Benny's kind of bummed out by this. He's like, why does this keep happening? Like, I want to I wanna stay cool. Um, so he goes to the genie one final time and goes up to genie and says, genie, I wish for a long white beard. And the genie is a little confused by this, like really, really thrown off. Like, why would he want a, a long white beard for? And the genie's like, all right, I can make that happen. I can give you a long white beard. Um, but the thing about this particular wish is you can't unwish it. You can't take it back, and you also can't shave it off yourself. So once you have this beard, you're stuck with it. And if you ever sh do shave off this beard, there's a curse, and you'll be turned into an urn. You know, like ashes that hold... Uh, it's a container that holds the ashes of people that have just been cremated. Um, so then he's like, okay... I, I want this beard. I think it'll make me popular and cool. So I, I don't mind. So Genie says, all right, you asked for it. Waves his hand. And Benny has this long white beard. And Benny goes to school with this beard. And everybody is super confused. So like, why does he, why do he get a beard? Like, how do you grow a beard that fast? And why is it white? He's like 17. Um, but he doesn't care. Um, but then eventually, like, weeks go by, he doesn't really know how to maintain his beard, right? He's never had a beard before, so it gets all mangly, it gets all dirty, like, it's got knots, it's just, it's just a really, becomes very gross, and if anything, it does the opposite of make him cool, it makes people want to stay away from him. So he's like, oh my god, I made a huge mistake, like, I should not have wished for this beard. So he says, you know, I, I know about this curse, but like, I really do got to shave this off because this is really hurting my social life. So he goes to the pharmacy, gets, he gets a razor and goes home, shaves off the beard. Uh, the genie shows up and is like, hey, I told you not to shave off that beard. And now I'm going to turn you into an urn. So the moral of the story is, a Benny shaved is a Benny earned. Thank you. How do you make seven even? How? Take away the ash. Hello, my PJC friends. I'd like to tell you a little story. Well, Max and Sophie, they were getting on in age and they noticed that they were kind of forgetful. Max would tell Sophie something. Sophie would forget what he said. Sophie would tell Max something. Max would forget what she said. So they decided to visit a doctor. Well, the doctor gave them physicals and said there was nothing medically wrong, but as people get older, they can get more forgetful. So it might help to write things down. So Max and Sophie went home, committed to writing things down to help them with their forgetfulness. They sat down to relax for the evening and Sophie asked Max to please go get her a bowl of ice cream. And she suggested that he write it down. He said, I don't need to write that down. I can remember that you want a bowl of ice cream. She said, but I want a bowl of ice cream with some whipped cream. Maybe you should write that down. I don't need to write that down. I will remember that you want a bowl of ice cream with some whipped cream. She said, but I also would like a cherry on top. So Max said, okay, well, I can definitely remember that, a bowl of ice cream with some whipped cream and a cherry on top. So Max trudges off to the kitchen to prepare what Sophie had requested. So time passed and Sophie started wondering what was taking Max so long. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, she's hearing some things in the kitchen. About 30 minutes later, Max comes out to deliver Sophie a plate of eggs. 
And Sophie says, where's my toast? Happy Purim, everybody. On a very windy day, a rabbi is walking down the street when suddenly a huge gust of wind blows his hat right off of his head. He tries to catch it, but every time he catch it, gets close to the hat, it blows away again in another gust of wind. A young Gentile man is watching the rabbi chasing his hat, and he runs after the hat, catches it, and returns it to the rabbi. The rabbi is so grateful, he gives the young man $20 and a blessing. Then he goes on his way. The young man goes to the racetrack with his $20, and at the end of the day, he goes home and tells his father the story about what happened. He says, when I got there, it was at the fifth race, and there was a horse named Top Hat. The odds were 100 to 1, but I figured it was a good shot for me because it was a lucky name because of the hat. So he bets all his money on the horse, and guess what? The horse won. So in the next race, he sees a horse named Stetson, and he bets all his winnings on Stetson, and he wins that too. The father interrupts at that point and says, so did you bring home the money? The young man says, no, I lost it all in the last race. I bet it on a horse named Chateau. I figured that was lucky because Chateau means hat in French, but I lost everything. The father says, you fool. Chateau means castle, not hat. Hat is chapeau in French, not Chateau. So who won that race anyway? The boy looks at the father and says, I don't know, some, some long shot Japanese horse named Yamaka. Top 10 medical dictionary definitions. Ottery, the study of paintings. Bacteria, the back door of a cafeteria. Bowel, a letter like A-E-I-O-U. Caesarean section, a neighborhood in Rome. Enema, not a friend. Genital, not a Jew. GI series, soldier's ball game. Pelvis, a cousin of Elvis. Seizure, famous Roman emperor. Urine, opposite of you're out. <laughs> And these are sayings from uh, world famous philosophers. To do is to be, Sartre. To be is to do, Aristotle. To be or not to be, Shakespeare. Dooby dooby do, Sinatra. What is a bird's head Halloween? What? Trick or tweet. <laughs> what is success? To a man, the meaning of success depends on his age. At age four, success is not peeing in his pants. At age 16, success is getting a little. At age 50, success is about career and family. At age 65, success is getting a little. At age 90, success is not peeing in his pants. Sadly, my pet parrot died last week after a long illness. Mind you, he was grossly obese. At least now it's a big weight off my shoulders. The army sergeant said to the private, Private Jones, I did not see you at my camouflage class this morning. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and That's the last one. The last one from the federal lines is a memo passed through the chain of command in a typical military installation. Rear Admiral Platt sent the following memo to his chief of staff, Captain Cummings. Tomorrow evening at approximately 2000 hours, Halley's Comet will be visible in this area, an event which occurs only once every 75 years. Have the men fall out in the inspection area in Dungarees and I will explain this rare phenomenon to them. In case of rain, we will not be able to see anything, so assemble the men in building 3116, and I will show films of it. So the chief of staff then sent the following memo to Captain Linville. By order of the Admiral tomorrow at 2000 hours, Halley's Comet will appear above the Naval Station here. If it rains, Fall the men out in Dungarees, then march to building 3116, where the rare phenomenon will take place, something which occurs only once every 75 years. Captain Linville's memo to Captain Hodder, Jr. By order of the Admiral in Dungarees at 2000 hours tomorrow evening, the phenomenal Halley's Comet will appear in building 3116. In case of rain, the inspection area, in the inspection area, the Admiral will give another order something that occurs only every 75 years. Captain Hodder Jr.'s memo to Lieutenant Commander Zon. 
Tomorrow at 2000 hours, the Admiral will appear in building 3116 with Haley's Comet, something which happens every 75 years. If it rains, the Admiral will order the Comet into the inspection area. Lieutenant Commander Zahn's memo to the staff personnel. When it rains tomorrow at 2000 hours, the phenomenal 75 year old Admiral Haley, accompanied by Admiral Platt, will drive his comet through building 3116 in his dungarees. <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> I love the joke. And I also love your laughing. That's awesome. <laughs> Hello, uh, Pope Francis wanted to reach out to his uh, fellow uh, world religious leaders. Uh, and so he invited the chief rabbi of Israel to come for a visit. And the chief rabbi in Israel gladly accepted. When the chief rabbi visited Pope Francis in his study, he immediately noticed a large white phone. And so the chief rabbi said, Pope Francis, what is this large white phone for? And Pope Francis said, well, that's a direct line to God. And the chief rabbi said, wow, you know, I would love to have a few minutes to speak with God. Would it be all right if I used your large white phone? And Pope Francis said, of course. So Pope Francis left the room to give the chief rabbi a little bit of privacy. And about 10 minutes later or so, uh, the chief rabbi left the study and went to Pope Francis and said, thank you so much. We had such a wonderful conversation, but I know this must have been incredibly expensive. How much do I owe you for the call? And Pope Francis said, yes, well, it is pretty expensive, a thousand euros a minute. However, we're not doing so badly, so don't worry about it. You don't owe me anything. So they continued to have a very cordial visit. About six months later, Pope Francis went to Israel to visit the chief rabbi at his uh, study. Uh, and when Pope Francis arrived, he noticed that the chief rabbi had a large white phone. So Pope Francis said to the chief rabbi, oh my goodness, now you have a large white phone. And the chief rabbi said, yes, I found it so wonderful to have a direct line to God that I got one as well. And Pope Francis said, you know, I've been traveling a lot. I'd really like to touch base with God. Would you mind if I used your phone? And chief rabbi said, of course. So he left the study to give Pope Francis a little bit of privacy. About 10 minutes later, Pope Francis came out and said, thank you so much. I really appreciated the use of your phone. How much do I owe you? And the chief rabbi said, oh, nothing. It was a local call. So there was a priest, a minister, and a rabbi. And they used to get together weekly for coffee and donuts. And one day they start talking about their experiences with uh, conversions and they and they decide that they want to really give each each of themselves a challenge and so they decide that they're going to try to convert a bear and each of them you know agree to meet with the bear um before the next time they sit down to have coffee and donuts so a week goes by and they have their experiences with trying to convert the bear and the minister, the priest and the rabbi get together for their weekly coffee and donuts. And they, they asked the uh, priest, well, what did you do to convert the bear? And he said, oh, I took the bear to a bingo contest. And he had a wonderful time and a lot of fellow congregants seemed to be very, very interested in conversion after the experience. So at that point, they turned to the minister and they asked the minister, well, what did you do uh, to convert the bear? And he said, oh, well, I took him to a Bible study. And, you know, he had a very, very, a couple of very unique points of view about, um, about um, the creation of the world and about God. And um, 
I think we made a very positive impression on him. At that point, the rabbi who's running late and everybody's checking their watches and saying, why is the rabbi running late? He comes in to the shop. Um, he's a total mess. He is disheveled. His coat is torn in various places. He really looks like he went through a terrible experience. And the priest and the minister turn to him and say, well, gee, what happened? How did your experience with the bear go? And he said, well, maybe I shouldn't have started the bear off with the bris. So my joke is, what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> what is ghost drive? A Bugatti. <laughs> what do you, okay. Okay, I'm gonna tell a joke. Ready? Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Right. Three, two, one. What do you call? <laughs> okay, hold on. Listen. Okay, I'm ready. Why did the boy throw the clock out the window? Because he wanted to see time fly. <laughs> Where did the polar bear keep his money? In the ice. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Where does polar bears keep its money? In its snow. <laughs> in its snow bank. In its snow bank. <laughs> Why did the pony get sent to his room? Because he said he loved. He wouldn't stop coursing around. <laughs> Where does pencils go on vacation? To Pennsylvania. <laughs> Why can't the pirate sing its ABCs? Because it's stuck at sea. <laughs> What did the left eye say to the right eye? Between us, something smells. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the teddy bear say no to dessert? Why? I don't know. Because she was stuffed. <laughs> Three Jewish mothers are sitting on a bench, arguing over which one's son loves her the most. The first one says, you know, my son sends me flowers every Shabbos. You call that love, says the second mother. My son calls me every day. That's nothing, says the third woman. My son is in therapy five days a week and the whole time, he's talking about me. Mary, Mary's mom had four children. One was named John, one was named Joseph, and one was named um, Lila. Which, um, who was the other kid? I don't know. Who was the other kid? Mary. Easy. I said Mary's mom. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you got I didn't say banana. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> orange man lives in the orange house. The yellow man lives in the yellow house. The um, green man lives in the green house. The blue man lives in the blue house. The purple man lives in the purple house. The pink man lives in the pink house. Who lives in the white house? I don't know. Who? Um, the president. <laughs> <laughs> what did one wall say to the other wall? What? I'll meet you at the corner. <laughs> so there was a man who went to the football game and he wanted to put um, a quarter in the gumbo sh machine because he wanted a piece of gum, but the gum didn't come out. So what did he say? What? Give me my quarterback because he was at a football game and there's quarterbacks in football. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are ghosts bad liars? Why? Because you can see right through them. <laughs> In a small town, a Jewish man had a home at the bottom of the hill. And on top of the hill was a Catholic church. He was in the church once and saw a baptism and the priest said something like, once a sinner, now a Catholic and saved. Every Friday night, the Jewish man made a chicken for dinner. As the Catholic parishioners walked up the hill to the church, they smelled the delicious smell of the chicken. After they left their services, they all went and ate meat, which was prohibited on Fridays.
The priest of the Catholic Church went to the Jewish man's home and asked him not to make chicken on Friday because the smell caused his flock to sin. The Jewish man agreed. The next Friday, the same delicious smell of chicken wafted up the hill. The priest went to the Jewish man's home and was going to say, we had an agreement. As he walked into the house, he saw the Jewish man dipping the chicken in the gravy, saying, once a chicken, now a fish. Once a chicken, now a fish. What do you call a dinosaur who's TNT? I don't know what. A dynamite. What do you call a duck that gets all A's? A wise quacka. <laughs> hey, Rabbi, this is Marv. And I don't have a joke for you, but I've got a PJC cheer. Get a ripsaw, get a bus saw, get a ripsaw, bus saw, boom. Boom, get a ripsaw bigger than a bus saw, boom, get a bus saw bigger than a ripsaw. Viva, viva, sis, boom, ba, PJC, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> that was awesome. Perfect. I'm glad you like it. I do. Well. You did a great job. Well. Thank you. You're welcome.